Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Imenya, and I am the Milkweeds and Monarchs Community Liaison for Budverse, a project at the Chicago Botanic Garden. Um, and we'll be talking a little bit about what we do. Budverse brings together researchers, horticulturalists, and community science on a shared journey to uncover the stories of plants and ecosystems affected by human impacts on the environment. Budverse tells these stories through data collection, data sharing, education, and personal connections. So Budverse is a community science project where researchers, educators, and community science scientists work together to answer really important research questions about, um, about the change, uh, timing of seasonal change in plants, which is called phenology. Um, so bud first community scientists collect plant phenology data. Phenology is the study of the timing of annual or seasonal life cycle events. So the data they collect includes when plants leaf out, start flowering, or disperse fruit, like in the image of the silver maple shown here. When a plant does all these activities matters, and we will discuss that um, in a few other a few slides ahead. So for example, you may have heard about plants leafing out and flowering earlier in the spring due to shorter, warmer winters. But what difference does it make if plants are blooming earlier? Why does it matter? Flowers blooming earlier in the season because of shorter winter sounds great, right? Well, unfortunately, not so much. So at Budburst, we have a variety of research projects, but what we're talking about today is the milkweeds and monarchs. So Budburst has recently, um, the milkweeds and monarchs project launched in July with anticipate, oh, Okay, so milkweeds and monarchs, uh, there is a very important relationship between these two, um, these plants and these butterflies, um, mainly because the monarch butterfly um, needs milkweeds in order to reproduce. So monarch butterflies um, only lay their eggs on milkweed plants. Um, and in turn, when the egg opens, the caterpillars come out and they are already on their lunch. So they are ready to eat the moment they hatch. So at Bud Burst, what we want to do is figure out if monarch butterflies prefer laying eggs on flowering or non-flowering milkweeds. Um, so the pro so what we want the community to do is observe milkweed plants and just check for eggs and document flowering stage, which you can see here on the right. Uh, different flowering stages are called phenophases. So there's three main ones that we look at, which are early flowering, middle flowering, and late flowering. So there are different types of milkweed species. But the main ones that we use here at Budburst are common milkweed and butterfly weed, as you can see in the pictures here. So they're similar, but also pretty different. Um, so milkweeds are typical uh, prairie plants. Uh, they have big clusters of flowers, and they have a distinctive milky sap, which is why they're called milkweed. Um, that, that milky sap is actually toxic to a lot of different insects, except for the monarch butterfly caterpillars. They actually eat the leaves that have this milky sap and then you utilize that toxin in their own body. So when they become butterflies, they are toxic to birds and other predators. So the female monarch butterfly will only lay her eggs on milkweed plants. So it's really important to have milkweed plants around so they're able to do that. So the pictures on the left show um, what milkweed looks like in the early spring. Um, and then their flowering season is June to August. Um, and that's for common milkweed. It says for common milkweed, but more or less all the milkweed species have a similar um, flowering time. And so then they bloom from June to August. And then once they're pollinated, the plants will produce seed pods, which are 
kind of fuzz, fuzzy and soft, uh, light green um, pods that get brown over time. And then if you noticed ever um, these big fluffy things that come out of them, which are the plumes of the seed. So those plumes help the seeds move around so that wind can take them and they can fly away. Now let's talk about the monarch specifically. So they hatch from eggs as caterpillars and eat the milkweed leaves and they go through five specific stages called instars. So you can see how tiny the egg is on the left and how tiny the first instar um, or the first stage of, of life is for the caterpillar. And as they get bigger, um, they, they grow their antenna on both ends and their colors become even more pronounced. So it's stripes of black, white, and yellow. But I think um, later there will be another picture that shows all of these stages. So we can kind of see what stages one through five look like compared to each other. But another thing that is important about monarchs and milkweeds is the monarch butterfly migration. So the first generation of um, monarchs are in Mexico and they spend their winters in the mountains on fir trees. Um, they hang out on the trees and just stay there until the season changes. And in early spring, they leave Mexico and travel north. So typically middle America, Midwest, a lot of Chicago is a very hot spot. Um, and so what they do is they'll come here and they'll, um, you know, lay their eggs on milkweeds, but also drink the nectar, um, which is a sugary liquid in other flowers. They'll drink nectar as a food source and lay their eggs and then they will die. And then their eggs will hatch, turn into caterpillars, turn into monarchs, and then they will continue the migration up to Canada. And so then they hang out in Canada for a little bit, do the same thing as their parents, um, lay eggs, drink nectar, and then um, they'll die and their children will become the fourth generation that goes all the way back to Mexico. So why should we study this? Well, monarch populations have been declining over the last 20 years and we want to find out if the monarch butterflies prefer laying eggs on flowering or non-flowering milkweed stems. So it can help us understand the right type of habitat for monarchs. So technically, if there is a large um, land management area that has a lot of milkweeds, with this information, what we can do is share the results of our study with land managers and they'll figure out if the monarchs do prefer to lay eggs on milkweeds with flowers, they would leave the area as is. But if they prefer to lay their eggs on milkweeds that don't have flowers, at some point in the season, they can mow the area and then the milkweeds will not be able to flower. Um, so they can lay their eggs. They, the, the plants will not die. It, they just um, kind of go back in their life cycle. So we want to know, because uh, the Midwest is a very big stopping point on the monarch migration, we want to know how can we support these monarchs um, with the milkweeds that we have in our area. And it would also be ideal to have even more milkweed than we currently do. So at Budverse, we want to do this by connecting with community members and we have these kits um, that have different things inside of them. So I think we typically give between two and four milkweed plants. There'll be a common milkweed or butterfly weed, which is the pictures shown in a previous slide. And then there is a packet of information in English and in Spanish about plant care, um, the background and history of the monarch migration, um, how to collect data. Um, there is also a flyer for other virtual trainings. And there's also information, there's 
different pictures and things to show you examples of uh, phenophases, the flowering phases, of a variety of resources to be able to do this well. Um, it also comes with a magnifying glass, so you're able to look at the eggs. Um, um, sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Um, so it also comes with the magnifying glass, so you are able to see the eggs well. And then we also include two tickets to the Chicago Botanic Garden and a $25 gift card to thank you for your participation in our project. Now, um, we will be talking about how to collect the data. So in the kit itself, we will have a data sheet uh, for basic data observation and then one for advanced data observation. Now, you can submit your observations either through the website directly, through our Budburst app, or you could use hard copy paper. Um, I would say that the easiest might be using the app so you are outside and you don't have to take much else with you aside from your phone and the magnifying glass and possibly uh, the documents um, that have photos to show you about the uh, phenophases of the flower um, and pictures of the caterpillars so you're able to know which stage they're at. So basically, in the app and on this paper, so we're going to use this document as an example, um, you're going to put in your name and the location you're at and the date that you're taking these observations. Um, you're going to write in what species you observed. So if you're getting milkweed plants from us, it'll be common or butterfly weed. Um, a plant nickname and patch name are optional um, entries. They're mostly to help you figure out um, if you have multiple patches of milkweed it's so you can differentiate them. Like if you have a front and a backyard and you're observing both and you want um, you know, to differentiate the observations you have in your backyard to the ones in your front yard, you would write something like that in those areas. Um, so we also ask how many milkweeds are in your patch. And so this photo right here is a good example of one plant. Um, when you have a a bunch of uh, milkweed in your yard or in a pot, wherever you have them. Um, if you have branches that are connecting to each other above the soil, those are one plant. But if you have branches that have soil in between, that would be considered two plants. If you have any questions about that, we can go over that at the end. That's a little bit trickier to do over Zoom. So if you have like two plants, then you would circle one to 10. So it's, it's an estimate, really, at this point. Um, we just want to know the size of, of moderate size of the patch you have. Now for part three, uh, when you are doing your data observations, the first thing you're going to do is write in the flowering stage. And so that is where that document I mentioned earlier with the phenophases will be really helpful. Um, you'll write early, middle, or late flowering. Um, and then you'll write the number of open flower clusters. So in this picture here, this is one, two, three, four clusters. Um, so that is how you would write, uh, that's how you would fill in this part right here. Then you would go and check under each leaf um, and look for eggs. And even if you see zero eggs, that is also okay. We want as much information as possible and zero is still data that we can use. Um, and then you will have uh, the next two lines here are about instars, so the caterpillar life stage. Um, so instar one is the smallest one. And then if you are unsure, you, you, can do, um, you, you can do the basic data observation sheet, which basically has uh, clumps and stars two to five. But the advanced data sheet um, uh, divides them all up into one through five. Um, it might take a little bit more to be able to differentiate the instars. Um, you might maybe want to take a ruler outside because there are different uh, 
they are different sizes and they have, we'll talk about that in the next slide. There's gonna be more detail in photos about the caterpillars there. Um, so basically after you have observed the plant itself, on the back of the sheet, it'll say, did you monitor all milkweed plants in your patch and you circle yes or no. So basically if you have five in your yard, but you only have time to observe two, that is okay. Um, just let us know uh, how many you did observe. And if there are other insects or spiders present in the patch, um, you just circle whatever you saw. And then in your notes, uh, that is basically for any important information you think we should know, whether it is, it is about the weather itself or maybe the, the way your plant looks, if, there, if it has pests on it or if there are things blooming near it that could be attracting other you know, that could be attracting other butterflies or monarchs themselves as a food source. Um, so just any important notes you think uh, that we should know, you would write that in that section there. Now, here is the information uh, that is definitely going to be the most important to be able to do this. So on the right side of this slide is the phenophases, which is a photo that we saw earlier um, that shows the early flowering, middle flowering, and late flowering. Um, so the difference between early and middle flowering is the number of uh, open flowers that you see. So early flowering typically has more buds than open flowers, and middle flowering will have more open flowers than buds. Um, and at the bottom left of this slide, you can see the instar stages one through five. So in your packet, are, uh, you in, in the kit, there is a document that includes this photo and it'll be much bigger, um, but it shows the egg really, really tiny over here. And then it shows in star one, two, three, four, and five, and then compared to the butterfly as well. So these are some really good pictures of every stage and you can kind of see the difference in development, how this one, uh, first in star is very small Second instar starts to develop some antennae right around here. Third instar, it starts, these antennae get a little longer and then these start to come in. And then the antennae grow even bigger and you can see that the yellow is even brighter than it was in instar three. And then once you get to instar five, the antennae um, are even bigger on one end and smaller on the other, but this is fully developed. Um, so in the basic data document, um, they, the categories are one and then two through five. So if you are having trouble differentiating between two through five, that is totally okay. Um, you can just kind of clump those together. Um, but if you are willing to, um, you know, challenge yourself and maybe measure them out or really pay attention to the tentacles, um, then that would also be very good information for us to have. Um, so yeah, so that is how to make an observation. And these are who we'd like to thank. And these are questions. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, yeah, thank you.